I can just hear Mayor furiously clicking in the background. I'm just desperately Mayor. trying to get more done. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor is uh, currently trying to buy Lego on eBay, let's be real. <laughs> that's, that's, all he, that's all he does. He's like, anytime we're talking, he's just fucking on eBay, Lego. It's it's become like grained into me that when I hear your voice, my, my brain immediately goes, eBay Lego. I, I think, to be fair, it's not actually the worst, worst uh, idea in the world. Yeah. Um, certainly eBay Lego is more interesting. Yeah. So, you know, it's got that going for it. Good morning and welcome to the Hobby Breakfast Show, kicking off your morning with Wargaming Chats. Your host this morning, as always, are myself, Arnold. We have the mayor. Hello, everybody. And we also have OT. Hi. You always see such a big pause, never mind. Today we're going to be discussing furries and badgers and our plans for our campaign, what our starting warband's going to look like, and we'll also um, kind of cover what furries and badgers is for people who are unaware, which is maybe a few people. We'll be back in just a moment. Hobby then. So... The, ho- the hobby section has... Save us, Arnold, save us! <laughs> yeah, the hobby section over the last few episodes has been, like, a, a, a anemic, I think is <laughs> the best word to describe it as, with the level of hobby that's been going on. Well, iron, but... iron, de- iron deficient. Iron deficient, very much so. Um, but I've actually done some this week. Has anyone else done any that they want to talk about before we talk about what, what I've been up to? I've started painting uh, my <laughs> my fox archer, um, and actually, oh, yeah. to be honest, had I had the right orange for it, it would have been done yesterday, but I didn't have the right orange for it, so I need to go to my local games workshop store. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> no. <laughs> not sure. Very much. Um, oh, yeah. um, and buy some orange paint and possibly some seraphin sepia on the recommendation of Ronald because I don't Ooh, have uh, any and it'll yeah, finish my my yeah. it'll finish my yeah wash collection. Um seraphin yeah. sepia is my favourite wash I think. Yeah. Um I'm trying to do it do my fox in the style of Legolas so I've just I just Googled Legolas um MSBG models and then I'm just trying to copy the paint scheme from those. Except a lot of it will be bright orange. So actually the colour palette probably won't work. <laughs> <laughs> orange yeah. and green works. Just orange. like yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um but yeah that's that's essentially where I'm at. Um I tried Basically. to do some highlighting and I used a green that was way too bright so it just looks a bit over the top, but it's fine. Basically what you're creating is Disney Robin Hood accidentally. Yeah. yeah. But also yeah. not copyright infringing. Yeah, definitely not. I'm we, not getting this taken down. Although to be honest, no revenue. So actually, yeah. it's a win-win for everybody. You no know, revenue, so it's all fair use. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mayor, have, have you, you? You haven't had time, had you? I've been preparing for a tournament. You'd be uh, at. Uh, that's this weekend, um, and writing the bare bones of my bros and badges list. We should probably say it's a kill team tour, so we're not going to be really covering it. I guess next week we'll no. briefly. I'll mention it in hobby. Yeah, yeah, it, it's not a Middle Earth tournament before people start vigorously rubbing their thighs. <laughs> okay, is that what you do when you what? prepare to hear about the tournament? <laughs> All the time. All the time. I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> what at the mercy of my visuals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I look forward to some like oak tree thighs <laughs> being oh, brilliant. slowly <laughs> rubbed by like a JPEG of a hand <laughs> moving up and down <laughs> because that that very much is the uh, extent of our our hobby. The amount of editing I'm willing to do. Yeah. Um right, my hobby then this week. Um so first of all, here's a photo of the uh snake that I claimed to have painted two weeks ago. Um I, I did technically paint it, finish painting it a week ago. I, I just really didn't take a photo. I, I took a photo today. Um, so there is that. Um, you will also hopefully see, if, if OT has been generous enough, 
to put on screen. Uh, my lovely hair, which I'll be discussing later in terms of rules. Um, I am really happy with this. Um, it mm. might be my favorite bows and badges model that I own. This is the hair pugilist, the hair boxer from bows and badges. Um, yeah, I I'm I just like like how it turned out. I feel like, I really like I, the snow. The snow's a nice touch. Yeah, the little little snowy bases because they've all got little scarves and things. So I decided to give them a, a snowy base. Um, I, I'm really happy with the fur. Like I decided to do like mm. a much lighter fur color because I felt like most of my animals were ending up just being the same shade of brown. So I was like, he's going to be different. Yeah, and the <laughs> snake looks really good as well. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, really happy with the hair. And then finally, I also painted up this little mole as well. My mole CRS, who is um, going to be my starting mage. Um. Yeah, and pretty happy with her. I, I, I'm not very good at painting black. I don't really understand it. So I feel like there's not an awful lot of interest in the fur. But um, it's it 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 will do. It's not atrocious. I'm also not amazing at painting yellow. So I I just put some seraphim sepia over some yellow, and that was about it for that one. But there you go. I'm I'm really happy with the hair though, and the snake's pretty good as well. I feel like the snake eye might be the first eye that I've ever properly painted. Um, I don't know if the photo shows that well because it's a bit of glare, but there's actually like a pupil, and it doesn't look trash. So you know, really um, high bar that I set myself, not looking trash. On a scale of one to ten, how upset would you be if I photoshopped in a picture of your actual hair instead of a photo of the hair that you've painted? Um, in terms of upsetness, um, I, I wouldn't <laughs> be upset because I think it would be funny as long as you do then show the actual hair that I painted. Okay. If I put your hair on the hair, would I get extra? <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit, like just a little, a little tuft of my hair, where we can okay. just crop that and then drop it in we're going to start off with a very quick overview uh of what bows and badges is which is it's a game basically um i feel like the thing that people would be most familiar with for me to compare it with would be like imagine wind in the willows but it's like a war game you think that's like militarized. a good way of describing i mean there are like they do fight winds the bows right because like yeah. the, the baddies like Am I? Wait. I feel I'm not sure it's worth the reach. Yeah, my my memory of Wind in the Willows is like of a really shit film, and I feel like there was like a machine that they got stuck in. Yeah, that sounds plausible. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know. But anyway, um, so there are no humans in the world, and the animals are basically living in a society that is we do live in a society it's medieval england that's that's what it is it's called and northumbria northumbria exactly so it, it's literally the north of england or nor northumbria and then you've also got things like strathclyde which is a historical kingdom in scotland is now strathclota i don't know why where the clota comes from but it doesn't really matter, does it? And then Mercia is Merce, like mouse. Very good. Very good. Anyway, so that's kind of the uh, background. It's left pretty open. Like the fluff is basically there's like a, a king of Northumbria that's not very popular. So there's kind of like maybe a, a rebellion that's about to happen and your warband is just in the thing. And really it's focused on like narrative. So there's like a whole XP system. And that's what we're going to be doing. Um, the game is not competitive in any way. <laughs> as much as we try to make it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I don't... there's a we there. Yeah, I don't think we've been trying. I think it's just accidentally been happening, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because you discover something, you're like, oh, that seems OP. Mayor, Mayor did come up with like a um, way of basically creating a character that could one-shot anything in the game. 
<laughs> and that was like the first thing Matt did with the rules there. He was like, if I take this guy with this spell and put this weapon on this guy and give him this rule, you could just one shot anything in the game. We were like, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's taken a lot of willpower to. Uh... Yeah, so um, it, it's it's a really interesting rule set, and I think actually you probably could do a lot with it. But it's um, quite like swingy, and um, it's definitely intended for like having some fun, rolling some dice, and not thinking too much about how to win. Rather than I'm going to work out how to win this game at all costs. I don't think you'll have fun if you do that because I think everything will just die immediately. That, that, that's kind of the conclusion we've uh, reached. So I think the um, the main like mechanic of bows and badgers, which I think is important for people to understand, is that statistics are worked out using different dice. So you roll like a D4 as the lowest statistic, and then the highest statistic I think is a D20. Um, yeah. You, uh, yeah, so you can upgrade a D12 to a D20 yeah. if on the advanced chart you roll the max amount. Then you can increase I, the stat, and it says you can increase a D12 to a D20, but nothing else. I was that. actually going to say about this. I think it's really weird that it jumps from a D12 to a D20. I don't know whether we house... Because there is a D16. I feel like mm. maybe we think about house ruling that if the D20 is really strong, because that, like, if you roll a nat 20 get plus seven anyway <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves as you can see like if you put any amount of thought into it you start realizing that some stuff can be really strong um and everything's based on a roll off so if you are hitting someone uh with like a little character you're probably going to be rolling a d4 or d6 and if it's a big character you're probably going to be rolling a d8 or a d10 that's kind of like the starting, then they might upgrade to the D12. So I think at first, like you think, but if your little character rolls like a six, then all the big characters is on a D8 just roll high and you can't beat them. But then there's this mechanic where you get like a bonus if you hit the highest number on your dice, which is you get plus seven to your roll. So if you roll a six, then you get plus seven, you get 13, which means you can beat the character who has a D12 because if they, unless they roll a 12. Now, there are other things that modify that. So that's not true in and of itself because you might get like a plus three. So if they roll an 11, plus three. But that's roughly how it works. Um, this means, therefore, that the stats, I think the stats kind of are a bit like a role-playing game. Hmm. May you're the most experienced, so do you think that's like a, an appropriate comparison? Um, it depends what you mean by they're like a role playing game, because in a role playing game, um, you're not like you don't have a different dice for each thing, it's always a d20, oh. but um, they're the themselves, the like things that they're covering. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely more, um, there's not just like martial prowess kind of statistics. You do have like a couple, but for the most part, there are a lot of other things you can do. And the game does seem built around, um, you know, there are what six different item slots, two for weapons, two for armor, an item and a special item. Um, and they, they'll all have effects and every character could have like upwards of uh, three to like six rules, depending on what you put on them. And um, it very much becomes individual for each character um you can do hiding and things like that so it's not just you know this guy is out in the open in some kind of pitch battle um, mm. and your um warband or not reflects that more than most yeah um, at this point yeah. it might be worth going through the stats what do you think like what you yeah. think is so stat wise you have movement which is how far you be um your strike which is what you use to hit someone and then the opposite to the strike is your block, which is what you use to defend. You then have, they're, they're kind of all paired. So you have ranged, which is what you use to fire. 
with nimbleness, which is what is used to dodge. Nimbleness is also used for like climbing checks and stuff. You then have concealment, which is, as Mayor just said, your character can hide and they might be hidden even if you have true line of sight. So this game uses true line of sight, but it also doesn't. Does that, make, that I think that makes sense. Like you can be hidden and then you pretend that true line of sight doesn't work, but the rest of the time it does. Um, you have awareness, which is what you use to try and spot somebody who is hidden. And then there are two stats which are used for kind of like courage. Um, one of them is used for, so like the idea of like, will someone run away? But then also they're used for uh, like magic. So that's fortitude and presence. And all these stats like will appear as like a dice. So your movement will, for example, appear as a D6, which means you can move six inches. And then if you're in terrain, you roll the dice and that's how far you can move. Um, and everything's like a roll off pretty much. So if your character is going to shoot someone, you roll your ranged, they roll their nimbleness. And then it's the difference between the dice rolls that is what you then use to apply damage and stuff. So that's kind of like the um, brief overview. It works very similar, I think, to a lot of other games in that you can make an action with each character and it's, uh, I move one character, then it passes over, you move one character. So kind of like very standard skirmish game kind of stuff from there on. I think the the main difference is this idea of like the roll off and using the number that you get more than your opponent. So also based on the roll offs, um it's not just enough to beat someone um if you beat someone what happens is you uh kind of perform that action by whatever the difference is so yeah. if you're attacking someone you do that much damage whatever the difference is um if you're shooting it's the difference um if you're casting a spell then usually there's a target and as long as you're above it then the spell happens but some of them it is a direct roll off with an opponent so um in those, though, usually the difference actually doesn't matter, okay. um, which is probably one of the only things in the game where, like, overkilling your role doesn't actually matter. Um, but yeah, um, the other really cool thing about this game is the campaign, which yep. um, is what we're going to be doing. So rather than what uh, most games do, where it's a one-off game, and uh, you pick your force, and that's kind of it. Um, a lot of games offer what they kind of allude to as a campaign, but it's not usually the priority, and it's not usually that good. It's um, like bolted on, isn't it? It's like in 40K, they have like a game mode, but usually people don't play it. Or if they are playing it, it's like, it, it's not like central to the design, whilst this is very much like, you can play a one-off game, but it's very clearly designed for you to play a campaign. Yeah, I, I, I think almost half the book is yeah. about oh, yeah. ca campaign-y stuff. Um, it really is designed to be played as a campaign. And luckily, the games only take like an hour, an hour and a half, and that's when you don't know what you're doing and you're like reading the rules and stuff. So, you, I mean, even the like between game... Uh, pieces where you're like sending your guys out to do things and to do labor and to upgrade your den and buy equipment and you have to pay your guys depending on how big they are and um there's all sorts of stuff between games to do and i can see occasionally potentially that taking longer than actually playing the game um but in like a nice way where you're like you're like about what you're going to do. i'd yeah. say the the best comparison i can think of is like in a uh, blood bowl league where yeah. you're upgrading your characters and like giving them skills and stuff and hiring new players and things like that. It, it works in a similar way, but there's more to do than in a game like Blood Bowl. Um, whilst we're talking about size of beasts, let's quickly mention obviously um, the animals are scaled in this game. So a mouse is very small and then the bigger animals so you'll probably have seen in Hobby that my hair is much bigger than the snake and the mole. Um, and then you can get like massive beasts, which are actually really 
like how tall are the badges you guys have bought? Are they like fifty mil yeah. high or something? Yeah. Like um, the badges yeah. are basically like three. I would say at least three times as tall as the mice. Possibly nearly four times I, as I tall. Think, like I think at least but, four. Yeah. Some yeah. More. So a, like, a mouse is maybe like SVG Hobbit size, but like a bit bulkier, but maybe height yeah. above that. Yeah. It's a guardsman to a dreadnought to all you for. Yeah. Which, of course, we have many 40k nerds and are subscribed, I'm sure. Obviously. And they're definitely listening to the Burrows and Badges episode. I think so. both the produced Middle Earth content. <laughs> I mean, well, do we, do we want, I suppose do we want it would be a, a hobbit to an end or something. I don't know. I'd say hobbit to like troll. Yeah, or, sure. Or cave troll. Maybe troll's a bit big, actually. Yeah, cave troll. That's cave a good troll. comparison. Yeah. Um, so the biggest animals are like the badgers, the big dogs, the beavers. You don't really like I there's no like wolves or anything. No, it's all like, like classic, classic English. Like wood. There's like a platypus and some of the weird stuff. Yeah, there's some rare are, animals. Are, are platypuses famous for inhabiting the English countryside? Well, this is what we're saying. They're rare animals that come from foreign countries. Ah, I see. So, like yes, the dude. the tortoise is another one, and there's a raccoon and armadillo. But they are rare. You can only have one in your warbands. Mm. Most of the regular animals are English woodland creatures. <laughs> I wonder if there are. I don't know, like the wider law, but maybe there are wolves, and there's like really big animals, but they don't live in this bit. That'd be quite cool, actually. Mm-hmm. Like an expansion, a, like a eighty mil tall wolf. Yeah, um, D twenty stats across the board, just fucking wreck you. Oh God, it's like the Dragon Emperor. It's the Dragon Emperor, God. but it's a wolf. Oh, perfect. Um, Can you ever yeah. get away from him? Um, and and so we, I don't think we'll get into the um, all of the warband options because there's way too many to cover in this video but you argue be way too many anyway yeah maybe you pick an allegiance which is like roughly decides how your warband works you pick a base which gives you a little perk and then it you can add stuff to your base as part of the warband you buy your creatures using pennies a starting warband has 350 and then you just equip with whatever you want so it's very very open and you can end up with very different creatures and you can also just kind of make whoever you want a magician like the magicians are kind of inherently weaker fighters because you give them debuff stats essentially but they can take spells and you, you just kind of really give them which as mayor will show you there's one allegiance that he's using which fully fully uses that um so yeah um and we're planning on doing like a kind of uh, linked campaign, uh, which all of our warbands will be a part of. Um, and then because I uh, have a problem. Uh, <laughs> Unrelated. Uh, yeah, not, nothing to do with bows and badgers. I have another problem, which is that I uh, have bought way too many bows and badgers miniatures. So I mean, we all... are, we, are we all in that boat? Like, <laughs> have four, like I'm just having problem. problems. I have one very big warband. You two have got at least two or three each. Like I, I now have four warbands. Stupid, stupid. I mean, they're not all like maxed, but but anyway, this means that I'm going to be like running like we've got some like NPC warbands so that we have like different groups to slot in when we need them. And I think Mare now has. You've got two warbands and your partner has a warband, right? Um, so I've got a all-hair warband mm-hmm. and then I've got a kind of militia royalist warband and now I've got a kind of arcane conclave magic okay. warband. And then does your partner have a warband on top of that? Uh, yes, she does. She's got her own warband. Um, <laughs> so... You see you my have like... me then. Like drug addicts, you just just literally, <laughs> you're trying to get me hooked as well. Get you, you, you are the supplier. 
I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Hooked. I've spent all the money I need to. And I'm not spending any more. Like you, it's can, you can deny it, but you said two weeks ago that you weren't going to spend any money, and then you immediately bought like five models. Well, because I hadn't finished my war battle. Exactly. Because I, had to re- that... I had to rewrite everything because you were like, "Oh, it's not that themey." I was like, "Oh, thank you, more themey." I did say that, but that is proof that you were hooked. I'm not as hooked. I'm. I'm. Mm, I'm you're redeemable. Getting you're getting there. You, you need lot. an intervention. You bought a lot of Riv Knights last year. I know, but that's that's unrelated. That's for my <laughs> that's a different addiction. That's that's exactly in, in, in the other arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, so um we're gonna introduce our war bands then. Um who would like to go first? <laughs> Am I gonna I'm go going first? So my war band is the Red Wing Gang. So it's a good. It's a riff off the Red Hand Gang. Oh, this is very good. Um, Allegiance. You're not is... allowed to say your own like puns are good. You have to wait for other people to say that. If if I waited for other people to say it, it wouldn't happen. So you know you. Okay, indulge. so you're there. You go. You got to indulge me. Um, my now my Allegiance is the Street Gang, which is a uh, new edition. Um, so there are these little PDFs you can get online where the guy who writes the rules like puts out kind of like experimental rules he's been working on. Um, I assume that eventually there'll be like a new edition or something. Um, <clears throat> the Street Gangs is something he put out because he made a load of miniatures, which are, they're basically Peaky Blinders, but animals. They're amazing. Um, I am going to be slightly tweaking the rules for this because the gimmick to this gang is that everyone starts the game as being hidden because they just appear like they're civilians. And he has it that they can ambush. I think that's too strong <laughs> because the bonus so is fucking good. It's the, so the good. Bon- the bonuses you get <laughs> ambushing would mean that as soon as you get to like a relatively high level character, they would just immediately wipe out the first person they hit. Now there are some detracting factors. So my guys can never have more than light armor. Um, because they're wearing street clothes. I think the way that I'm going to be playing them is that they start the game as being hidden and they can move and stuff, but they, if they attack someone, they lose their hidden status, but they don't count as ambushing because I, I just think it's too good. And I think that they're already fine and they already it already fits with the theme and the fact that they're hidden already means that you can't just freely attack them unless you make the awareness check. So I yeah. think that that's a, a, how I'm going to be house ruling it. Um, like my... you, do, you do get other bonuses as well, which are really nice. We'll look at yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's definitely not weak. It's just it, no. it'll be quite unique to play, I think. Which will be yeah, really good. I think it'll be it'll be fun to play. And um, I think in the campaign, my guys, I, I'll explain the theme in a moment. Um, my Den is a tavern, so they operate out of like a, a kind of slightly dodgy pub or inn, that kind of thing. Um, and the perk that that gives is that I don't have to pay upkeep on my models. So like it's assumed that because they're living in a tavern that they get their food for free. So I, the upkeep is quite a small cost, but it's like a nice little perk. So I get a little bit more money each turn, essentially, that I don't have to spend on them. Um, it's probably a bonus of like 10 to 12 gold per turn, isn't it? And it, it does yeah. stack later on as well when you're hiring more models. So it will actually be quite relevant. For sure. Um, I'm going to start off with six models. Um, three three of which you've already seen, and then three of which I'm going to be painting over the next few weeks. Um, the leader is, I love this model, um, Thomas the Red Wing Oak Tree, after who the gang is named who is a pigeon and he's like a pigeon crime lord (laughs) so the theme the theme of my um list is that my gang are um smugglers and they are going to be smuggling weapons from the kind of like southern lands and they're selling the weapons to like the rebels who are like rebelling against the king in Northumbria. That is what rebels do. That is what rebels do, as we know from uh, I remember Star that Wars. From Star Wars. Yeah. I, I remember learning about it in history about the, the Rebel Alliance and the galaxy a long yeah, time far, ago. Far away. Yeah. Very good history lesson. Um this then 
my warband aren't really <laughs> my warband aren't really interested in the rebellion. They're just making money off it. Which is fun. Like Han Solo until he had his, yeah, his character arc. Exactly. <laughs> just like Han Solo, they're kind of good guys, but they're also kind of not. They are the scum and um the villainy. <laughs> villainy. <laughs> yeah, very good. What is it that he's called by Leia? A nerf herder? Nerf herder. They're nerf herders. Nerf herders. You heard it here first. Um, tie, in, tie in that no one saw coming. Yeah. Burrows and Badgers X Star Wars. <laughs> oh, sci fi Burrows and Badgers would be sick. <laughs> I'm just saying, if if the guy wants to bring out a sci fi range, I will I will buy them. I okay. oh, imagine well, like. We should a... get royalties. Yeah, we should. Uh, could you imagine like a, a little mouse or like a weasel with like a laser gun? That would be pretty cool. It's basically Baby Yoda. Well, with a laser gun. Oh, oh, Baby Yoda with a laser gun. <laughs> But it's a mouse. <laughs> Just so good. Just so good. Um, so, because he's my leader, um, and this is the same with all leaders, you get to increase one stat and you get to give them a, a special rule. Um, so, I've increased my range stat because he's got a pistol. Um, so, it makes it more likely that that will be useful. And I've given him the special rule lucky, mostly because I just felt like it fit with a the theme but it's also quite useful um you may re-roll um a single roll off once per game and you can re-roll any permanent injuries and for a campaign that's actually quite useful because if your yeah. if your models die in a battle um then you have to roll on an injury chart and obviously because your leader gets free perks to start with you don't want them to die ideally because yeah. no one will ever have as much stuff as the leader because they start mm. off with a stat increase and a special rule. So I, I've gone for that because I think long term that's quite useful. Um, but he's mostly my leader because I like his model. And, um, that's allowed. And yep. you, you'll, that's see with my, well. yeah, you'll see with my <laughs> list that um, it's not very... I don't know how competitive it's going to be. Uh, my second, then, um, is my hair. Love the hair. So good. This is Harry Fists, is his nickname, because he punches people. Very good, yeah. you see. Yeah. What a nickname. Uh, McCleverer. Um, because he's my second in command, he gets a special rule, which I'll come on to. Uh, hairs are pretty good to start off with. Yeah. Um, yep. you're already D10 with your strike, so they're fairly solid already in combat. Um, they're at, they're good at magic as well, actually, but Harry's not a magician. Um, and they have leap, which is like one of those special rules which I feel like I will never, never use. use. Yeah, forget. <laughs> yeah, the, forget. The, hero the heroic challenge of Burrows and Badges. Exactly. Forget. Forget's probably more accurate. He also starts with his strong one which means that uh, when you successfully hit somebody, you add one to the result. So slightly brain combat. Um, I spent his special rule on giving him unarmed fighter, which means that he doesn't receive a negative for not being armed, which you might argue is a waste of a special rule. <laughs> but I like that it's because he's a boxer. Yeah. yeah. He uses his fists. He just punches them in the face yeah. relentlessly. Hence how he got his nickname. Yeah, that is how he got his nickname. <laughs> is that how he got his nickname? Yeah. Well, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> we we won't get onto the rumours um, about Harry, but yeah, <laughs> uh, but they're all, but they're all true. <laughs> um, I refer you to Harry's lawyer. Uh, anyway, um, Harry is like. He is an actual boxer, but he's like on the payroll of this gang. So that's like how he fits in. But he, he is also a proper boxer. Um, we now move on to uh, Sophia Sweetstone, some good alliteration there, who is my adder model. And she is pretty good. I actually really rate the adders. I think they, they're decent. Poison is really good. 
is they start off with poison and they start off with unarmed fighter. Now, you can never equip them with a weapon because obviously they don't have hands. But How I is he doing the button up, buttons up on their uh, waistcoat? It's a good question. Um, Get someone else to do it for them. Yeah, Harry Harry does it. Harry, with it, That makes sense because he, has, he, has he doesn't fist. have a weapon. His massive yeah. hands. He does he does. have like cramp in his hands so they're always balled up in fists? Yeah, I think that's okay. the only logical conclusion. He that has severe like arthritis <laughs> or something. Yeah. He just keeps on <laughs> 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 God. Um yeah, so my my adder um pretty useful. Weirdly, um my adder has a special rule called light fingers. <laughs> fingers. <laughs> they should not be allowed to use that. It's the tail. The little yeah, tail okay. or the tongue. Oh, yeah, nice. the tongue. Um at this point I'll explain. Light fingers is a special rule that all of models in the gang war band yeah so the street gang all get this rule it basically means that you can try and steal an item so items are slots where you put like usable so like a magician for example might have an item which they consume which makes their spell a bit stronger you can try and steal it which is useful to debuff but there's also a chance that you just make money so my warband can generate like a very low amount of income, but can generate a little bit of money. But you do that at the expense of attacking. So I feel like actually most of the time I probably won't use the special rule, to be honest. Um, so Sophia, yeah, she is really cool model, really likes that adder, had to include it into the warband. We then move on to my small model. So we've got Rasp Coppard, the little mouse. He's armed with a little pistol. He's drawing it from like under his coat. Really cool model. I'm in the middle of yeah. painting uh, him. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he's really fun. Um, I've given him a pistol just because mice aren't that good in combat. So he's going to be more of a, a, a shooter. And then we've got Dirty John Har Harley. Um Again, a lot like Harry, uh, we won't be getting into uh, why he's called Dirty John for legal reasons. It would be libelous, wouldn't it? What's it he would doing be... with that fish? Oh, what is that? It's like a cudgel. A cudgel or a, or a truncheon or something. Yeah. Is it? Why is it? Why is it? That shape. Why is it bowed? Uh, again, it's, it, 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 the dirty it's, room is. We don't need to go into that because a, a cudgel is like um, it's like he's put like a rock in like a bag and he's gonna like use it as, like an. Oh, uh, it's in like a bag, is it? Okay. Well, it, it's it's like it's it's a weapon you could sneak in somewhere because it's a bag yeah. with a rock in. Yeah. Sure. But anyway, yeah, he's got a one-handed weapon. He's got light armor. Um, the reason why I've given the shrew this is just because the the shrews are slightly better than the mice, like to start off with, because they have a slightly higher fortitude, so they build a little bit better in close combat. But they're still not great. <laughs> like, let, let's... The mouse has D four block. The mouse has D six, doesn't it? Um, does it? Mouse has D6 everything. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's only Fortitude that they have a bit better, I I'll think. Sabotage my own, my own miniature there. No, mice do have D4. Yeah, my, I thought mice do they? Oh, shit. Yeah. Fuck. So that changed, changed my mouse to D4 as well. But D D4, and I'm actually going to put the, the maths on this earlier in the, in the episode anyway. Like, D4 is almost best than a d6 like because 25 percent to get plus yeah, seven time you're, you're critting and like the averages are really similar there's like 0.2 in the overall in the averages you're getting so it really doesn't make much difference which is another interesting part of the game because your little yeah. characters in a way because they're more likely to crit yeah. in some ways you might argue yeah. are they're not more consistency is not the right word but I think they're better yeah. in terms of like so if you were shooting, I almost think yeah. um D4's better because you're more likely to get eleven, um, which 
virtually no creatures can be able to dodge, especially with the light move on this. So, Although yeah, no, it's, nothing it's, has. Does anything have D4 range? The, oh, uh, the, the Ravagers do, but they the can't carry. Are. The uh, mole. They can't carry. You, you don't really want to be but shooting. The mole is the short sighted. <laughs> well, the mole is short sighted. We'll, we'll move on to my mole, Bella Nollis. Um, short sighted means that you half the range of the weapon. So, yeah. yeah. You don't want to so give that. Have, um, the bow, you'd have a nine inch range. To toads can't take weapons because they are natural hunters, neither can bats. I'm not sure there actually is anything that's D4 range that can actually shoot. No, I don't think. I don't think. Maybe is it an armadillo? Maybe, um, but I don't know if they're D six range. Um, no, not nothing is D four range that can actually shoot. So you'd have to deliberately injure your character to get it. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll we'll see if that so, works. Yeah, um, wildcat can't. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, wild, Wildcats are natural range as well. Maybe, maybe that's an intentional choice. Maybe D4 think, shooting is open. I think that is intentional, to be honest. Um, yeah, so our, my last character is Bella Nollis. She's the only one who's not armed with a... Um, not equipped, rather, with light armor. So they all have light armor base. And we, we were discussing that we think, actually, it's better to not... Like just to max out characters and not give them as much equipment, and then just buy the equipment. Because mm -hmm. if you're playing in a campaign, but yep. I, I I can be bothered. <laughs> nice. I was like, that's too much effort. I'll just give them all this and work out later what I'm go gonna do. Um, this is my uh, first mage, so you'll um, she gets delicate one and weak one, so she is. Worse at hitting by one, and when she gets hit, you add one, is what that means. Uh, moles yeah. are naturally strength one anyway, they're strong one, so that cancels delicate out. Um, she also has because moles get like a really good perk, which is tunneler, which is basically you can put them on the board any way you want, but they get a really bad debuff, which is that all of their spells that have range are halved, and if they use the ranged weapon, it's halved. So, um, I chose a spell which didn't need range. <laughs> Makes sense. It just needs line of sight. Um, it's a really straightforward spell, because um, I am stupid, and uh, can't be bothered to keep track of complicated things. The target gains a plus... Out. Plus, thank you, plus three modified to their next roll off. The reason I like this spell is because it's just, there's no situation where that's not useful. You can mm -hmm. put it on somebody who's about to be hit so that they get plus three to their block. You can put it on someone yeah. who's about to whack someone so that they are going to be even stronger. And because it's plus three to the roll off and not to the final result, they're more likely to win it. Yeah. It's. It's just a really useful spell, and I think it's quite nice as the starter. And I'm yeah. going to recruit a, another wizard later on, um, and you can up upgrade your wizards potentially. So I, I think I'll bring in a more complicated spell for some synergy later. But I, I like that, and I also quite like this idea of like luck being a running theme, like mm, uh, yeah. The street gang with my leader being lucky and it being kind of like a, a, a thing. Um, so that that's my little warband six model. So it's like on the larger <laughs> end of a Stein warband, probably uh, four to six is standard, isn't it? I think yeah. like if if you were going a bit more elite, you'd have five, and then if you had like all really big, you get four. But yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm really looking forward to playing them because all the models are really cool, and yeah. I've already bought the four models that are going to be added because max size warband unless you take something called a hireling which is basically like a, a enslaved model i think the rules yeah are. yeah but, or, or paid they can be paid as well no, they, they mine, have... mine are going to be enslaved okay i just want to make it clear i am against slavery against <laughs> <all forms. laughs> I think it's just good to remind people. You know? It is always good to remind people that slavery is bad. Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so so that's my um, my uh, warband. Good. Um, who did we say was going second? Mayor. 
Matt, do you want to take us through then uh, the rough outline of your warband? What's it looking like? Yes, so uh, I don't have much of the fluff down, so I'll just have to take you through what it currently is. Um, so, I mean, fluff-wise, I, I kind of envision them as some kind of... Um, I don't want to compare them to the Jedi Order, but sort of maybe do-gooders slash um, group of... Hang on. quick, Very quickly, OT, we're picking up all of you eating. Step by step. Cool. Okay, that was intentional. That was intentional. That's fine. No, um, I'm really sorry. Continue, and I'll cut. <laughs> there you go. Um, so uh, it's the arcane flung, arcane flung, cliff, arcane flung, cliff, 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 cliff. Yeah, yeah, what? Sorry, the arcane flung, cliff, 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 Morning and... war gaming. So, uh, this is from the uh, fifth PDF expansion thingy that mm -hmm. what's his face released um and <laughs> this is basically everyone's <laughs> what's his face? Every... Christ. <laughs> everyone has to be a wizard mm -hmm. so they all have to start with at least one spell um there are also uh some other cunning skills that they can choose from but i gather that they're just cunning skills for everyone um they have mental prowess, so two of my characters can increase their fortitude or present stat by one die. Um, they can choose from pretty much all of the magic types apart from, I think there's one in the book they can't choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are also three new um, lists of spells that they can choose from, which I believe no one else has access to. No. So I'll be giving them a good read. Um, I'm starting with the Ruined Farmstead because it's no upkeep. My other option was the um, uh, Abandoned Burrow, which lets you kind of uh, burrow two people at the beginning of the game, a bit like the Mole. And I didn't think that would synergize as well or make as much sense. Like, my guys are going to be a bit arrogant and sort of know it all -y. So um, it didn't make much sense for them to burrow around. So no upkeep is fine with me. That'll probably save like 10 gold a game, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and well they off. start, yeah, they start with the library upgrade, which is plus or minus one on the advanced chart, which is the chart you roll on every time you level up. Um, and uh, instead of a skill, uh, I could just, uh, or instead of rolling on the chart, I can just use a cunning skill instead if I want to. So I thought that was quite quite cool. Um, I've got one penny because um, this comes to 349 pennies in total. So the next sheet's completely blank because I've got no character names as of yet. I can't think of anything cool enough. Um, and nothing's themed particularly too hard yet. So I, I want to sort my fluff first before I start giving people's names. So the first character is going to be my leader. Um, as you can tell straight away, this is not a Burrows and Badgers miniature. But this is a, a STL I found online, and there are three models which I'm using STLs for, one of which I've heavily converted, but um, this one I'll keep pretty much the same. So it's a massive raptor. This is going to be my, my leader. I've increased their fortitude from the um, leader bonus. Uh, so that's their stat increase. So now they're D10 in fortitude and presence. And as I found out, fortitude and presence really important for your leader because um it lets you roll off for priority and also is very important for routing um fortitude also very important for not dying between games so if your character is removed from the board um they've got to pass a roll of six which means they need a seven or higher uh so obviously the better fortitude die you have the more likely you are to pass that and not have to roll on the wound chart. Um, they have a mage focus. They've got a staff on their back, as you can see. Um, so they're going to get plus one to their casting. Um, they come as a raptor with fly, unarmed fighter, strong three, and natural hunter. I've also given them lucky um, for the similar reasons as Honor gave theirs. Um, it's just all around very useful. It's essentially an extra fate um, that this character can use. 
fate points is, isn't something we've covered yet, is it? Um, but no. essentially, uh, everyone starts with 10 fate points, but it might be more if your warband is under-costed compared to your opponent. And when you're going to roll a die, you can declare that you're using however many fate points, and then you roll however many fate points you've declared worth of whatever dice you're rolling. So if it's a d10, you'll roll that many more d10, and then you just pick the result out of all the ones you rolled. So, um, yes, Lucky is going to be useful, especially for a character that you want to keep around. And because of an armed fighter, this character is going to be a sort of a bit of a Mary Sue, I think. I don't know what spell I'm going to give them yet, but um, with their D10 strike, they're going to be able to fight in combat. They're not that strong uh, defense wise, only a D6. So I probably won't be running them in too eagerly, um, but they'll be able to hit pretty hard if they need to. And with Fly, um, I mean, obviously they're only moving six normally, but I think fly means they can move 12, does it? But then they can't do something else. I can't remember how fly works. Is You can move 12, but you can't then use equipment. But obviously for the raptors, that's fine because they have an armed fighter. Uh, that makes sense. So in theory, I can pounce in and finish someone off with a D10 strike then. Um, but obviously as everyone has a spell... They're all going to have weak one and delicate one. So overall, this character goes down to strong two and delicate one. Um, yeah. Uh, also, something to note, when they advance, obviously um, you could pick a spell instead of advancing or getting a skill, but uh, you don't get a, an additional weak one, delicate one when you're advancing if you get a spell. So... Um, uh -huh. Unfortunately, the weak one, delicate one, is like attacks for my whole my whole warband. Um, so that's that character. Um, then we've got a badger. Um, I really like the fearsome rule. I think it's really good, um, and I've kind of matched that on the badger with the uh, beguile skill as their second. They've obviously got a spell, and I've chosen what this spell is going to be. It's going to be from the noble. Um, and it's going to be Radiance, which is, uh, I've forgotten what the target is, um, but as the, as its presence, and my Badger has D10 presence, which is pretty good, enemy models cannot look at the caster, and so cannot, be, cannot target them with spells that require line of sight, attacks, or shooting, lasts D4 turns, or until the caster is wounded. Obviously, the caster can't be wounded because it can't be attacked, but there are some AoE things, so um, if either of you see any AoE things, then that's always something to bear in mind. Um goes down to strong two tough one which is still pretty good has a one-handed sword and a shield um if you had armor then you would get a negative modifier for each of the tough that your armor is giving you to your spell casting but because uh the shield just gives you a plus bonus to your block it's not giving you any tough it doesn't give you a negative modifier to your casting so uh d10 presence um, Beguile uh, works very nicely with Fearsome. Fearsome, you do a roll off with your presence against the enemy's fortitude, I believe, and if they fail, they get a minus three to their block and strikes for the rest of the turn against the Badger, which matched with Beguile. Beguile means uh, it's essentially the same thing, um, but you add your different add the difference to whatever you're about to strike them with. So if I went to strike someone with my D8, I'd first roll my D10 against their fortitude. And then if I win, I add the difference to my strike. So um, the presence stat for this character is really important. I was debating buffing it, and I might still actually reading that again. But um, I've spent my Arcane Conclave bonuses elsewhere. Um, and we'll see that later. So just kind of a, I wanted a mix of like magic users and kind of paladin-y type mm -hmm. people. I didn't want to just go like the all really delicate, weak, running around mages. I wanted some that were like combat mages. Yeah. So this is going to be the start of another combat mage. This hair looks like it has armor, but actually it doesn't have armor. Um, so it's just got a one, uh, it's just a standard hair with a one-handed sword and a spell. No idea what the spell is going to be yet, um, but... Uh, I think eventually it's going to have a shield. It's going to be the kind of knightly looking hair, the one that looks like it's out of Monty Python. Um, so uh, he'll get, get a shield eventually. 
maybe some light armor, depending on what his spell is. But they've got D8 Fortitude and Presence. Um, like OT said earlier, the strike and block for the hair is really solid. So, um, yeah, just a solid melee character with the spell. Then we come on to some of the more interesting things. So, this is another STL. Um, this is just going to be a large bird. Um, it's 35 points with a spell, 40 points. It has a staff on the model, which I'll give it eventually, but points value-wise, I just needed the extra model at the end, which is a mouse, um, which we'll come to. So uh, I for forewent, is that a thing? I foregoed, whatever. Yeah. This guy's not got staff, and the next character's not got staff, um, which in total is 30 points. I feel like 15 points for plus one casting is a lot of points to spend on it when standing still gives you plus two like it's quite a big difference so um i'm not having any staffs to start with but that gets me a whole extra character so i thought that was worth it to start with um obviously it's a bird um it can fly around which is really useful for a, a spellcaster so i'm probably going to give him some kind of off offensive ranged spell i haven't decided what that's going to be yet um but i've also given him one of the arcane conclave bonuses to up his fortitude from d8 to d10 so he's going to be a super reliable caster and he might even be able to move around and cast at the same time without too much trouble um so that's him so yeah like i said eventually he'll hopefully get a staff uh, but i don't think i'll need to equip him with very much more than that for him to be a nuisance uh, next we've got the kind of ying to his yang um it's a cat it's exactly the same points um, it's exactly the same stat line, but instead of concealed D4, he's got concealed D6, and he's got a D10 presence instead of fortitude. So we've got one that has fortitude, one okay. that has presence. Obviously, the bird has fly, uh, and the cat doesn't, but the cat has slightly better conceal. Not that I'm planning to use that. Um, this model, I thought, was really... This model actually started as... Uh, it's more of like a necromancer type model the staff had like a big skull on it all of the clothes were really ragged and had like um i'll tell you what i'll show you i'll show you on what it looked like originally uh, do i have it somewhere i don't even know um just put it in the group chat later yeah so it, it had like uh rips all over its clothes with big stitches mm -hmm. and it looked very evil um it had like a little little skull icons everywhere um it is a Sphinx cat, so I don't know if that's going to be terrifying, but um, I think it'll be fine. He looks yeah. fairly innocent otherwise. Um, so, yeah, just a little... Uh, maybe he lost his hair in some kind of uh, magical accident. Who knows? Um, so, eventually, he'll have a staff. Uh, but, again, same as the bird. He's just going to be a Ooh. solid spellcaster with presence. Were you not tempted to get the Siamese cat? I, I, mm, I really hate that model. I really, really hate that model. But you could just use like this as a Siamese cat, is what I mean. Oh, we could say this is a Siamese cat, yeah. I forget what the... It's just very slightly better, isn't it? It's got like one better it, stat or something. It starts off with D8 in fortitude rather than D6. But okay. it loses the... Um, what's it worth? Uh, it's not got the nimbleness, is it? Yeah, so uh, it, drops, yeah. it drops down nimbleness, but you gain the fortitude. Uh, That's really interesting. Um, but it's also... Um, oh, it's only, one, it's only one penny more. Oh, no, it's the same It's the same amount of pennies. So, you know what? I think I will actually make it a Siamese cat and we'll make that D D8 and nimbleness D6. But that does make it rare. Not that it matters, it matters. because you have more than one, but... Yeah, that's okay. I think um, I don't think I'm going to have any of the cats, but yeah. if I do, I'll just be normal cats. But no, that's a good shout. Fortitude, as I found out, um, mm. in the game against my partner, uh, I only had four models. Um, two of them died by the end of the game, and I rolled both on the chart, both on the um, uh, test at the end to see if they had to take any permanent injuries. Um, they needed a 7 or 8 on the D8, and both of them got a 7. So instantly I was seeing the the bonus of having a D8 as opposed to a D6. So, Although, arguably, if you roll a 6, you'll get plus 7. 
I'm. Uh, is, is it a roll off? Is that it's a roll like? off? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so actually, D four might be really good for fortitude. <laughs> I don't think anyone has for fortitude. Uh, do they not? Okay. No, they do. A small bird has D four fortitude. There you go. Small birds OP. You heard it here first. Um, they're yeah, they're D six and everything apart from fortitude and presence. Um, anyway. Yes, so that's the cats. And then the last character, which I squeezed in, um, is I really love this model. I don't know what it is. About I this model. really like this model too. I, I so nearly really... bought this model. Yeah, it's so, so simple, but it's just really nice. I, I bought it before having any use for it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew I was going to use it for something. So um, I figured for 30 points, I, I will just do this. And I know what spell they're getting. Um, it's going to be a cure because it's got a low target and it's a heal spell. Yeah. So it's, it's always going to be useful. Uh, target of three. So if they stand still, it's a target of one, which means on a D6, I need a two or higher. So for the most part, I think I should be able to get that. It is a relatively short range with 12 inches, but um, D8 plus two, I think it's going to be a fairly good amount of wounds for the most part, hopefully. It's a really good spell um, too. Yeah. So um, just a little versatile uh unit that i can send around and do whatever i need um so that's that's my warband um hopefully i'll come up with some more fluff and some cool names um and finalize the spells for next time mm -hmm. nice cool. what do you I guys think, think? It'll, be, it'll be really interesting to see how it plays yeah because I, I feel like it's going to be really hard hitting I feel like it'll be interesting to see how powerful hiding is against this warband. Because mm -hmm. if you're if you're forced to make awareness checks rather than being able to cast with your actions, I wonder whether that kind of then uh, yeah. reduces the, the power. But it, it'll be interesting to see how big that delicate one is on everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I think it works. I think it will in some cases make a difference but i'm hoping that for the most part if i'm gonna die it's not gonna be you know on the nose i'm hoping you'll overkill me for the most part and that i won't feel too bad about it but i think it's even more... getting wounded yeah costs yeah. you on the dice rolls because especially think... on your when you're getting multiple wounds in like you can be getting like minus two or minus three to your rolls and then it becomes yeah. so much harder to cast them thing I oh, think I what will make it what will be more frustrating when you don't get the overkill, you just get a few coming in, and then it's that one extra that takes you to the next wound threshold. Yeah. Because in, in in the game, every four wounds you take basically means that you get a minus one to all roll offs. Yeah, which is pretty pretty youth. Yeah, but that's why I think a healer will be useful as well. So I can yeah. maybe yeah. mitigate some of that by. You know, if someone's just over the threshold, I can try and get them one or exactly. even two thresholds. Back to the higher. other side. Yeah. That, um, that's going to be probably the second spell I put on my bowl, actually, which I know will mean it only gets a D6, a six inch range, but <laughs> I, I think it's quite a useful spell to have as well. Yeah. Oh, dear. For sure. Mole's a good caster. I like the mole. The mole is a good caster. Mo moles are just good. Yeah. Like the only thing they're not good at is shooting. Well, their, their movement of four inches is a bit. But you tough. just spawn, you just spawn them where you want them. Yeah, they're also yeah, only a four inch true. move though, so they're not going to be moving around very quickly. <laughs> but you you just spawn them where you need them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You just spawn them there. Oh my god! You know what, you know what I'm saying? The fellowship of the dead. The dead. <laughs> oh god. Here we go. It's going to be a roller coaster to ride this one. No regrets. Right. Um, I've fleshed out the universe of mine a little bit, it would be fair to oh, say. I, I've noticed, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually Small going to pull, pull that up from the bottom. Um, I don't know. I just, I just I, I got quite into it. I quite enjoyed it. Um, so essentially, um, mine are, it, it's a cult, um, like Scientology, but more aggressive. Um, and more aggressive. <laughs> more aggressive. And we don't have Tom Cruise, which is, which is a, a, oh. a um, But um, essentially, um, they're a cult who are trying to get more people involved. And like, it's based around um, the works of J.R. Tolkien, because I'm not very creative. Uh, and I like to stay within my zone. So... Um, <laughs> um, basically, 
the like the loyal followers of this are like the Lord of the Rings is hard canon. This actually happened, and like we need to, to as far as possible try and emulate specifically in this case the Fellowship of the Ring because um, I've, Max Warband is around like nine ten, and I figure there are nine members of the Fellowship. I've embellished a few because I wanted to add them in. I thought it would be fun. Um, essentially. Um, the the main character in all of this is a bit like uh, is Frodo essentially, um, and he's the one who carries like the holy book, which in this case would just be the Lord of the Rings. I'm going to try and get like a mini three D printed book for my shrew to carry, um, and he'll be Frodo. Um, they're actually the idea of making it. There's an item in the game that's called like a inspiring item or something that lets them reroll four to choose. I think that would be quite cool thematically. So when I get more points, I'm going to put that one in. Um. I'm gonna put a bit of a themey thing. If um, if the character if the character representing Frodo gets killed, they all have to go after the guy who killed him. Essentially, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna be kind of the theme. So um, it's a bit like Aomer with his like he has to kill the guy who killed Owen or Frodo. Essentially, um, but the the rule I'm gonna have is that every time he dies, I'm just gonna say another shrew gets recruited exactly the same to replace him. So irrespective of whether or not I want to, I will always have to buy another shrew with exactly the same war gear to replace the Frodo character. That's going to be the theme. Um, then I, I embellished it even further because I was, I was, I was living, in, living in a fantasy world because uh, it's better than the one we actually live in. Um, and there are, there are two factions within my cult. Uh, there are the ones who actually believe this stuff and then the ones who are like, this is probably bullshit, but we've got a cult thing going, so let's make some money. Um, there's the devout ones who are like, <laughs> there's the devout ones who are like, okay, we need to stick to the teachings. We should only have nine in, in our like in our fighting force. We should not have any more. And I've got the modern ones who are like, fuck that, we're a cult. Let's make some money. Um, and they're the ones who are going to try and get hirelings in. So the way that links to my warband um, is my leader, and you'll start to spot the theme of how this works. Is called Baragorn, Grey Snout. Okay. It's a combination, and stay with me on this, of Badger and Aragorn. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. And then to, to, Grey Snout is a combination of Grey and Snout. Grey and Snout because it's Badger. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. And yeah. Um, he's going to have a two-handed weapon. Um, you, you have chosen a female badger sculpt. Yeah, well, it, it was the only one that was available. I really wanted the mercenary one, but it was sold out, so uh, this was oh. the only one. I messaged was. the guy, and he said it might be available in January, but that hasn't okay. happened yet. I okay. I also don't want to spend more money on this game, because I've already Maybe spent enough. Wait. Because I'm an impatient man. Um, okay. So, that's, that's what it's going to be for now. Um, and they have the special rule uh, gang leader, which lets them recruit hirelings, which is sort of like going to represent them getting more people into the cult. Essentially, that's the idea. So he's going to be the one who wants to like recruit new people and get them involved. Uh, I mean, opted... You put your point into presence President because... because the gang leader, every time a hireling has to do something, they roll their fortitude against his presence. So I wanted to buff that presence to make sure they're actually doing what I'm saying. In fact, I've got a plan further down the line to upgrade. The, there's two tiers to the skill. You can upgrade it so they can take an additional six, and then they also gain a buff where they can like make multiple people act, act at once. So I'm hoping further down the line, if things go really well, I'll have like an actual warband of like 15 or 16 um, rocking up every time. And yeah, I'll explain more about Hylings in a second. But Okay, um, moving on to uh, my second in command. Um, who is called? <laughs> it's another corker. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it because people can read it. Uh, ba- <laughs> Bandalf Dark Root. Yeah. Okay. Stay with me on this. It's a great Gandalf. model. Gan- it's an S T model. Originally, he was meant to be a beaver because it's almost objectively better for what I need him to do. But the badger model with the pipe and the stick was too good to pass up on, so he's going in. Um, I've got to give him a mage's pouch, um, which links, I'll explain in a second about my faction bonus, how it links to that, but um, I've given him two spells, um, which are both ones that you had said earlier were pretty good, so I've given him luck and cure, um, 
which are as gives the plus three to the roll offs and then cure heals the wounds. So that's the idea. Um, I think badges are pretty solid base anyway, like strong three, tough two should be fine. Um, it actually mitigates a lot of the debuffs you get for the spell casting. So he's a really expensive model, but I'm hoping he'll be pretty solid. Um, moving on. He's not your second though, is he? No, he's not my second, but he is like, he's the leader of the, the traditional faction. Yeah. Anyway, um, next one, I'm just writing down timings, um, is, can you work out this one? It's a fox nice. and it's Legolas. So it, you put them together and you get <laughs> Feg. Hello. Fegulous. <laughs> a <laughs> um, um, few issues with this one. Um, I wanted to give him a crossbow because basically I wanted to make him the mo- the best ranged fighter he could be. And I wanted to give him a crossbow rather than normal bow because they have a better range and they do more damage. Um, not sure how that works thematically, but I'm okay with it. I have, however, given him the skill fast shot that lets you, as long as you haven't moved, shoot twice a turn. And I think I'm hoping that's going to be really good because I think that combo of D8 ranged crossbow and fast shot should be really powerful. So that's the hope. He'll be similar to how Legolas was in the movies. Um, I didn't mention that Fegolas is also a woman in this universe. <laughs> yeah. I like that you enlarged the image just to make sure they had boobs. Off the check. I have to say, it's quite pronounced on the model. I was quite surprised. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we move. I'm not sure it was necessary, but that's fine. No. Uh, each to their own. Um, next one. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm going to have to listen to this as well so many times I know, I know. I know. Um, Shrodo Halftooth it's a shrew called Frodo All right, you hate if you want to hate, I don't care at this point um, Shrodo is the actual that is a good name though yeah I know it is, it took, it took me a while um, yeah. light armour so um, basically he's holding a hand weapon um, I ran extremely tight for points on this one, and I spotted something at the end that I hadn't realised. Is you have to give every single person in your warband uh, a weapon, an item, or a spell. Um, yeah. And so I had to rejig things a bit because otherwise it wouldn't have worked. Um, so yeah, he's only got light armour, but the plan is he'll have an item, hand weapon, and probably some armour to represent the mithril coat. But anyway, yeah. that's how we're going. Um, next one. See if you can guess who this is meant to be. That's right. It's Sham <laughs> Stout <Stoutful. laughs> Again, another woman. <laughs> I think it should be a uh, Sham Big Pan. Sham Big Pan. Sham of the Big Pan. Sham Big Pan Stout for Big Pan nickname. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Two pa- or two pans. I Sham, commend two I, pans stout for. I commend you on um how how many women are in the war band. I think you are rectifying that that uh, particular complaint about the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Um again, I can't equip Sham with everything I want to. Um idea <laughs> is f- further down the line it'll be armor and two hand weapons. Um I was hoping to somehow maybe get a second pan because that has long been my dream for <laughs> for Sam in the Lotcha universes. You know, uh, dual, dual wielding pads. Buy another model and then cut the pan off. Perfect. You know what? I might wins. actually have um, a second plastic sand um, lying around, so yeah. we we might be able to arrange that for you. I don't okay. know if the pan will be big enough though. I don't care. It's as long as there's two pans, I'm happy. But yeah, that, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Um, next one, and I'm only going to do the ones in the OG war yeah. I can't be bothered to do the rest. Um, right here, Swiftwing. Um, I wanted a I wanted a flying model in my army, so I just put Guire here in because that's what I wanted to do. Um, originally completely unarmed, but I realised I needed to equip something, so just put a buckler on, on him because um, that's they need an item, essentially. Um, yeah, I, I think it should be fairly solid. Um, like I think flying models in general, it's quite useful to have one around because they also have really good stats, like strike's good, nimbleness is good, awareness is pretty good, so yeah, I, I think a useful um, part of the army. Um, the idea is, in the end, I'll have the entire fellowship and some other ones, but we'll introduce those further down the line because it'll take too long now. Um, 
but yeah, we'll be wild beasts. So basically ignore any terrain. So you can just move every, through everything normally. Um, and then I've taken the wild garden, which lets you take some like spell items for free. So the mm-hmm. idea is that um, Bandalf will be able to take some stuff that buffs uh, luck and cure. And so hopefully those will be going off a bit more often. Yeah, yeah. That's what his mage's pouch is for. You store yep. kind of um, herbs yeah, yeah. in it. Yeah. Give you a better version of the spell. It's like uh, heroic channeling. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I can take four items for free per game, which I think is quite good. Um, it is and really like, good. Some of them and, are expensive. Yeah, and I think I think it should help just a bit more consistently, especially because like later on, I will really need my leader Aragorn to stay alive because otherwise the hirelings will probably just leave or like not do what I want them to do. So like keeping him alive, I'm going to put some armor on him and stuff like that will be really essential to the warband actually working. But yeah, yeah, it should, should be all right. And I think I think especially as I recruit more members, like I've got I. I could go up to like 14 or 15, like I said. I think it would be really cool to have the fellowship and some hangers on as a theme. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be um, really interesting. I also feel like because we're playing a campaign, it's going to change how you play. Because like we've been talking about, with, you know, your character can die. You know, will, will you keep your leader hidden because you're worried or... Will you decide to concede a game because you don't actually want, even though you might be able to win, you don't want to actually lose the models it would require to do? So it kind of adds a slightly different element of jeopardy. Because like leaders, leaders are really good. They get that skill, they get that stat upgrade. It's really powerful. But also like if they die, it specifically says in the book like you don't get another leader in that type. So like yeah, it it will really hurt your warband if if you roll unlucky on the the wound chart or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. I think that just that about pretty, does yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much does it for B and B. So um, we'll we'll be back. I think it will be late February or early March because um, we'll be getting stuff for some not battle reports, but um, uh, I don't know what the word for it would be. Summary, discussion. Battle, battle summary. I don't really know. Yeah. Like discussion of what's happened every month as part of our campaign. Hopefully, yeah. but we might miss a few months if it doesn't <laughs> work just, out. With just a, real just life. a month here and there. <laughs> but it, it will be an ongoing feature of the yeah. uh, It's good, like me and the Riv Knights. Yeah, you notice how bloody cheap some of the. Um, buildings are yeah like you can you can build a shrine of any three materials i know it costs 40 Mm. labor yeah but then all your characters get plus one concealment roll-offs and Mm. or you can get plus one to all cast i assume uh maybe gonna be building that one fuck you know that sounds good i'm gonna build that yeah world shrine well, I mean, the library that you get is the most expensive upgrade in the game. Like, it's it a really good. It's a really good starting thing. Yeah. I'm gonna get a jeweler's workshop. I think. Nice. I even think, like, I think an armory. I think the like the royalists, um, the yeah. one of the base factions That's in the really book, solid. like the just just getting armor for free is well. Or, well, you know, you have getting to, getting you, consistent armor is really you have powerful. To invest your character's time. Yeah. But as like a consistent outcome, I think it's really good. Whereas like on the wanderings and yeah, anyway. So my partner on the wanderings thing, um, with three characters going wandering, I think she got about eighty gold. Nice, um, very good. Which is enough to buy armor worth yeah. three um, toughness easily. So yeah. I, I'm actually, I, I'm thinking just wandering is probably the best thing. Mm. I mean, that's not going to happen every time. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I, I think yeah. you want. I, I think you do want to just shove a load on wandering, and that's the downside yeah. to the hirelings. They can't wander. Yeah. They can labor though. They can um, labor, and in which case, you know, once you've got a few, you might as well yeah. just build everything basically. And like because they're half price and they come with a hand weapon, like I think they're actually quite good. Um, but yeah, like I do worry later in the campaign because they won't be leveling up, like. But they're like, they're chaff, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and I will I will be using them as like 
like spoilers, but Boromir is going to be a hireling, and I am just going to charge him straight in. <laughs> it's kind of terrifying <laughs> as a wildcat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Boromir should be a uh, frog. On what basis? So that you can call him Foromir. Right. I called him a cat. Well, a wild cat, and I called him Waromir. Sounds good. Mm. Sorry. Should we spend the next few minutes going through the A to Z and seeing which one would be the you best can, prefix make, to Oromir? You can make him a bat, and then you could just call him Boromir. Boromir. <laughs> <laughs> the bats are all Or a badger. Shit, or a bird. Or a badger. Yeah, or a badger. Or a beaver. A platypus. Oh, or you a... could you could make your warrioress, your female badger, your Boromir, and then when you get the two-hander guy, make that the um, Aragorn. I might just swap the models out yeah. when I get him and just I'm not sure anybody will notice. So you are going to buy the badger, I thought. Oh, did you see? A second ago you said you weren't going to. Okay, well I won't then. Are you happy now? No, oh, you, should, though. you should buy it. Oh, yes, you should. You should give in. I'm to damned if I do or damned if I don't, isn't it? I get criticised either way. Like, I'm criticised for not buying it and then criticised for buying it. Okay. Buy the clock. Okay. It is okay. good for me. That is Something the like super hand. Um, yeah. Is there any news? I, I think uh, Boromir, just quickly, should be an otter so you can call him Uramir. <laughs> 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 Or so, what would um, the adder be? Our, 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 our or, or a hound, horror mare. Let's get on horror. Yeah. There you go. Just give me all these great ideas. Yeah. I should be writing them down. Sorry. You really should. You really yeah. should. Otherwise, um, I might forget them. You asked the very good question of is there any news? Not really, is the no, fantastic. Uh, I think. Um, yeah. Is there anything we want to talk about? No, because the runtime's already pretty excessive, and we might need to. And if we stop now, we can play Rocket League. That's true as well. I, I, I legitimately don't think there's anything worth talking about. So, yeah. right then. So, we're going to end it there. We'll be back with Bows and Badgers next month. We are next week, they're going to be returning to look at Legends. We're going to be doing Kirith Angle, Moria, and the Black Riders, finishing off the uh, Ringbearer uh, source book. So, that will be what we'll be looking at. Week, <laughs> Ned's already on Rocket League. Good. <laughs> I assumed he was buying Lego when I heard his mouse clicking. <laughs> I'm doing both. There's a, there's a fucking more limited more edition more. Millennium Falcon on the way to his, his house right now. <laughs> anyway, um, right. Um, if you are interested in Burrows and Badgers or you uh, want to tell us your thoughts, drop a comment. Follow the, follow the affiliate link in the description. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, by by a mouth. Um, oh, if only. If only. It, it'd, be, it'd be good to hear, though, if, if people are kind of relatively interested. I mean, we're going to make them anyway, so <laughs> you swap yourselves in. But uh, it, it'll be nice to hear if people are kind of like, oh, that's cool. Um, ding that bell. Yeah. That's all we want. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't unsubscribe. <laughs> Don't just subscribe either. Just ding the bell. We, yeah. we don't need subscribers. We just need people to... Uh, uh, the stats say the otherwise. <laughs> well, do we need... Need, need the strong word. We'd like subscribers. Uh, for crave sake of, subscribers. sake of my motivation, possibly. It, it gives OT an enormous sense of well-being. Self-worth. When he... I, I was quoting Blur. But, um, he, whenever he sees a subscriber, so... In person, he will stalk you. Actually, so, is, this, uh, is this is this still a blur quote, or have you deviated? <laughs> like, is this still the outro? Uh, yeah, it's still the outro. Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, Bye. it is goodbye from OT. That was premature. Yeah, I already said it. And it is goodbye from there. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a shit week. Have Back a great off. week.